Hey guys, welcome back to Calibrate Tools. Now, when you're working on a project that requires you to find the angle of a slope, you don't want to be off by too many degrees because that can throw the whole project off. So to avoid that, we have tools like angle finders. So hit that like and subscribe button, stick around, we'll find out how they work, and I'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, I put together four different types of angle finders here so you can get familiar with, you know, what's out there on the market, okay? So here, the first one, we have a regular analog angle finder. And that simply means, you know, it's analog. It's not digital. There's no LCD screen that displays numbers automatically. It has a protractor on it. And if you remember what a protractor is, uh, you know, you remember that from school in geometry class, it's simply a uh, semicircle, usually 0 to 180 degrees, okay, and back, 0 to 180 degrees both ways, um, that helps you find the angles or degrees of an angle. Okay, guys, let's take a closer look at the protractor and all these numbers on the dial so we can understand what's going on. So if you look at the outermost periphery of the protractor, you have 0 to 180, all the way around to 180, and that's from right to left, okay? And then if you go down to this inner row, you have 0 all the way around to 180 degrees again, and that's from left to right. Well, why is that? Well, they configured it this way depending on where the angle opens up in reference to 90 degrees. Okay guys, so if, if it's been a while since you took geometry, I know it has been for me, and we need to know what an angle is and how that's defined, let's go ahead and do that right now before we go any further, okay? So an angle is simply the intersection of two lines at a point called a vertex, okay? So if we look at this material in front of us, we see one line going this way and one line coming down that way, and they intersect right here, and that's called the vertex, okay? Now, it's very important to note that we're not dealing with two dimensions all the time when we're out there working in a three-dimensional world, building three-dimensional things, you know, in the construction world, in the DIY world, and so forth. With that said, there's the outer portion of the angle that can be measured, and there's also the inner portion that can be measured. Now, if we look at this piece of wood here, you, we notice that it's in the shape of a trapezoid. And if you remember from geometry class, that's what this shape is, right? You have two obtuse angles and two acute angles. Now, what is an obtuse angle? An obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees, and that would be these two on top here. The acute angles means that it's less than 90 degrees, and that would be these two right here on the bottom right and left side. Okay, so how do we get an accurate measurement of all four of those angles on this three-dimensional piece of material here. That's where these two rows on the protractor, the one on the outside and the one on the inside, come into play. So let's see how that works. Now, angle finders uh, are not the same as protractors that you would use in school, right? Because angle finders have levers, and they could have other moving parts that may not allow it to orient on a piece of material like a regular protractor would. So. We're not going to talk about how to use a protractor to measure these materials, a regular protractor to measure these materials, because you can't do that with a regular protractor all the time. But an angle finder can measure different types of material and different angles, you know, with ease. Okay, so here we go. The first thing you want to know, as we discussed before, is where the vertex is on your material, on the angle that you want to measure on the on the material you have. So if we're going to measure this angle here on this piece of wood, <clears throat> where's the vertex? Remember, uh, a vertex is where two lines meet, right? So if you have this line and this line, guess what this is, this point right here. That's where they meet, and that's called the vertex. So you want to take the vertex, which is this, and place it as close to the pivot or vertex of the angle finder. Okay, like that. And then you simply take the angle finder and bring it down like that on your material. And it should take the measurement. 
Now we know this is an acute angle, so it's less than 90 degrees. So when we look on the angle finder, we're not looking for something greater than 90 degrees. We're looking for something less. And that would be on the inner row where it landed right here. And that says that's about, you know, a little over 50 degrees. Okay. Okay, so we measured this angle right here and we came out to about a little over 50 degrees, right? And we knew this was an angle that was less than 90 degrees and you can tell just by looking at it, right? So uh, another way to do that is, where's the base of the angle? The base of the angle, if you're looking down on this piece of material, would be right here, right? And you know 90 degrees is straight up like that. So you know if it's to the right of 90 degrees on a regular protractor, it would be less than 90 degrees. And that's how we know just by looking at it, it's less than 90 degrees. But you know, if you're familiar with angles, you know just by looking at them, you can tell they're, if they're greater or less than 90 degrees. So the next angle we're going to measure is this one right here. And just by looking at that one, you can tell that it's greater than 90 degrees. Okay, so where's the vertex on this angle right here? Well, I just tapped on it. It's this right here. So what did we do before? We placed the vertex as close to the vertex of the angle finder as we could, right? So this is what you do. You take your vertex of your material and you try to get it as close to the vertex of the angle finder and there you go. So we know just by looking at it that it's greater than 90 degrees. All right. So we don't want to look for anything on the scale that's less than 90 degrees. So if we look at the scale, we see that the outer periphery is less than 90. So that can't be the scale that we want to look at. We want to look at the inner scale. And as you can see there, it's about 135 degrees. Now I know some of you guys are saying, well, if this is a true trapezoid, then that obtuse angle that you measured at 135 degrees and this acute angle that you measured at over 50 degrees equal over 180 degrees. And that can't be uh, true for a true trapezoid. And you know what? You're right. But guess what? This is a uh, a piece of wood that I got off uh, some couch feet. And I was just using it as an example. It's not perfect. It's not shaved or machined to tolerances that are beyond belief. Okay, so uh, just give me a break there. Thanks. Okay, so so far we've measured uh, angles on this piece of material right here. And this can be considered uh, an outside angle measurement, right? Because it's on the outside of material. But what if you have something like this where the angle is on the inside of the material? How do you measure that with the angle finder? You know, so say if you're going to measure uh, a corner, you know what I'm saying, in, in a house or something like that, that would be an inside angle. And uh, this is how you use the angle finder to measure those. This particular angle finder here, in order to measure an inside angle, you would turn it like that, pull it out, take your inside angle, place it, place the angle finder, and make sure that each arm is flush with each side of the uh, angle. And that's how you measure it. In this case, obviously, this is a 90 degree angle, and you can see that it measures about 90 degrees on the angle finder. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other angle finders I showed you guys earlier. This is the digital angle finder here, and it's not as uh, acrobatic as the last angle finder, the analog one I just showed you guys, uh, but it's pretty simple. You just turn it on at zero degrees. Okay. Now let me turn it over because it seems to be backwards or something. So it's on zero degrees, as you can see. And uh, you simply, you know, take your angle that you want to measure. And say if it's the outside angle of this piece of material. And you have about 91 degrees. Okay, it's about 90 degrees, but like I said, this, this pieces of wood that I brought, they're not uh, perfect here. And uh, so you're not gonna get an exact 90 degrees, but it's, it's about 90 degrees. And you can do the same for the inner angle, the inside angle, which is 
which should be about the same, about 90 degrees. And there you go. Now this is a stainless steel angle finder or a machinist's protractor, okay? And again, it's not as acrobatic as the first angle finder, and it's pretty simple to use, okay? You see that it has, uh, like the first protractor, an analog dial uh, on its surface. And uh, say, for instance, you want to scribe an angle. You can turn it to the angle you want to scribe. Say, for instance, you turn it to, uh, on the dial, you turn it to... Um, 120 degrees okay so you tighten the knob and that's on the that's 120 degrees on the inner circle right so you tighten the knob place it on your your surface say piece of wood in this instance you take a uh, pen or pencil and scribe a line right there now you can cut a uh, 120 degree angle turn it over that's about 120 degrees and you can also use it to measure angles as well so as you can see this is a, an outside angle of this piece of material and just by looking at it you can tell that it's less than 90 degrees right this is the vertex and you can tell that it's less than 90 degrees so you take finder here there you go and what do we have here we know it's less than 90 so we don't want to look for anything over 90 degrees so that's about if you look at the inner circle and where this lands that's a little over 75 degrees okay and lastly we have the digital sliding t-bevel and as you can see, uh, this is the sliding portion. Simply loosen that knob and here we have the sliding portion of it. Okay, you can use the sliding portion for, uh, you know, molding and trim and so forth. So the great thing about this device, it has a few functions. First of all, as you can see right here, it says zero degrees on the uh, display there. And we know that that's not zero degrees, right? So great thing about that is you can set the uh, zero degrees on it. So you just find a flat surface. Let's take this for instance, and you flatten it out like that. And then you press zero, let go, and it uh, it's at zero degrees now, right? So that should be pretty accurate. And it is, you know, once again, it's a digital uh, angle finder, like the uh, previous one we looked at. So you just simply, if you want to measure the inside angle of this piece of material, you get about 90 degrees, right? Same with the outside angle. Around 90 degrees. And once again, we know that this piece of material is not perfect, so you're not gonna get a perfect uh, reading there of 90 degrees, but it's just about 90 degrees, okay? Another good thing about this device is that you can see uh, let's let's turn it to an uh, another angle other than 90 degrees. Here you have 118 degrees on here. Now if you press reverse, you can see the balance of that. Okay, so that that would equal 180 degrees. See that? You press reverse and you can see 118, and you see the other the other half of that angle. Will be displayed when you press reverse so you can see each half of, of the angle so another great thing about the sliding t-bevel the digital sliding t-bevel is that you can actually store information in it right so let's just say uh, you're running from one rafter to the next or you got to go to the bathroom right so let's turn this uh, to an angle right that's about 80 degrees and you want to store that because you got to go to the bathroom just press hold and it's stored right so even if you move this it's not going anywhere right T bevels are also great for scribing right so let's just say you want to scribe that angle you know you tighten the knob place it on the edge 
Take your pen or pencil. There you go. Now I know you guys learned how useful angle finders can be. So if you like what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.